Facet injections come in a range. Uh, they can be done as medial branch blocks, which um, blocks the nerve supply to the facet joint or intraarticular facet injections that are performed within, within, a, within the substance of the facet joint, within the synovium of the facet joint. The general approach is uh, to make the patient better as early as possible, and I believe that's best accomplished by intraarticular facet injections, which tend to be a broad injection. Often we're injecting into a, a disease osteoarthritic facet where the medication will certainly will go into the synovium, but will also go into the epidural space as well. So an intraarticular facet injection is a pretty broad injection, and, and, and a steroid injection deposited into that area will have both epidural and facet related benefits for the patient. That's what I tend to utilize for a majority of my patients. If the facet is inaccessible because of osteoarthritic disease and stenosis, which happens about 25-30% of the time, then the approach can be a nerve block of the facet joint, which is a, a medial branch block, a multi-level injection that can also make the patient better promptly. If we find that we're getting good benefit um, that lasts, let's say, several months or so from the medial branch block as well as the intraarticular facet injection, that can continue um, until the patient is better and doesn't need the injections anymore. But if we're getting into a, a cycling of the pain, let's say, where it returns every couple of months, a follow-up can be uh, a diagnostic nerve block, again, lumbar facet medial branch blocks, to identify the, the facets that are causing the pain. And, and go ahead and going ahead and doing the uh, thermal radiofrequency ablation of the medial branches that can give pain relief of six to 12 months. Here I believe it's important to fine tune on which facets to block and which facets to ablate. Um, it's very easy to, for example, to do too many levels. That has a higher chance of morbidity for the patient and a higher chance of increasing the pain for the patient after the injections just due to the number of injections that are performed. So here use your history and physical examination and imaging studies to pretty much help you focus on where most of that pain is coming from. And often it's one or two facets that's contributing the predominance of the patient's pain and, and once that isolated patient can get a, a more, uh, a more uh, effective injections by limiting the number of nerves or by lim limiting the number of facets that are blocked that are causing the, the, the heart of the patient's pain. And whatever pain that remains usually gets better subsequently through physical therapy and good posture and, and good, uh, good uh, proper body mechanics.